Hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Uh, let's talk Drake. Let's talk Kanye. There has been a little bit of development in their beef over the past like 48 hours or so. Kanye West's new record, Donda, is out. Drake's new record, Certified Lover Boy, is out and about. They had a flare-up in their rivalry in the lead-up to their new records, which was kind of initiated, at least, you know, this most recent round of it, uh, initiated by Drake calling Kanye out on a feature off the new Trippy Red record. I thought that with both their albums being out, it would just be done. If it occurred again, it would occur around maybe the release of like a Pusha T record or somebody else coming back and wanting to promote something. But uh, uh, no, shortly after the release of Certified Lover Boy, Drake saw fit to leak an unfinished track off of Kanye's Donda, a track titled Life of the Party that features Andre 3000. If there was any speculation as to whether this leak is real and it was centered around Kanye's record, I mean, Andre, uh, his verse is clearly like in reference to the concept of Kanye's new record. And uh, Andre also put up a uh, little social media response to the leaking of the song and the tone of the track on Kanye's end, because I guess he wasn't so much into the idea that, uh, Kanye was going at Drake a little bit on that track and he wanted to absolve himself of like any ownership or kind of like knowledge of of that song and the direction that it went in and saying that he liked to work with Drake and Kendrick and you know basically wants to be chill and just like friends with everybody. So I don't know, I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused as to how exactly this adds to or turns up the temperature on the Drake and Kanye beef especially on Drake's end. I've said this on Twitter and I'll say this here again, but like Drake tries to get back at Kanye by leaking a song from his new record that's better than the vast majority of the tracks off of uh, the Drake record. More entertaining, more heartfelt, and better written than the vast majority of the songs off of your record. Kanye has stuff that's on the cutting room floor that's left over. And hey, you know, I will take a little something back in <laughs> my review of Donda and say Kanye didn't have the wisdom to edit himself. Kanye was certainly editing something. Why uh, some other tracks made it onto the record, I don't know. But uh, clearly this song did not make it onto the LP. And even in its unfinished state, it's better than most of the material off Certified Lover Boy. Andre 3000's uh, guest verse is immaculate on the song and uh, poetically and emotionally is certainly more impactful than any featured verse on the Drake record. As much as I love the You Only Live Twice features, it's certainly, you know, leagues above anything that is on the Drake record as far as a feature. And, you know, Kanye, while his performance is not amazing, uh, he sounds engaged in the process of what he's doing. He sounds like he's actually putting in effort, whereas there are numerous tracks off of the Drake record where he's not trying for shit. He's not doing anything. He's asleep at the wheel. Now, I will get into a few criticisms of the track. Beat, I don't really have an issue with it. Andre's verse, I think, is fantastic. Kanye's uh, appearance on the track is sort of what, uh, you know, needed the most work. Uh, some of his disses, I don't think, really land. I think Kanye does trail off a little bit and he doesn't center the song around his mother as much as he could or should. Now, you know, I, I think he does a great job as he kind of trails off into some of the things that have been happening in his life as of late. Some of the stuff he's had issues with, like he's talking about, you know, the Trump stuff, the red hat stuff. There are moments where he effectively ties it into, you know, maybe how things would be if he could, you know, have his mother there to influence him and, and so on and so forth. You know, it's not like he trails off so hard where it's embarrassing, but you know, it's not as focused a verse as some others are on the record. And it's clear that he is not flowing as well as he is on other parts of the album. And, and that's not to say that his rapping is like just straight up garbage. It sort of sounds like something he would have re-recorded later, which I think is also indicated by the fact that, you know, his singing is, uh, you know, definitely something he's just kind of riffing out and improvising in the moment. So the track is like clearly not finished. It's clearly not finished, which is part of the reason why I'm so, uh, 
I guess, uh, a little uh, tickled by the fact that there are Drake fans that are like, oh, yeah, see, his, his disses are garbage. This song sucks, dude. Uh, I, I know the song's not perfect, but like, this is a song that Kanye did not voluntarily release. Even with this album being in tribute to his mother and with the death of his mother, and her memory hanging over this record, this unreleased song from the album is like more of a direct address to her and Kanye's relationship with her, more of a direct address to her memory than any song is off the actual LP, which again, I think speaks to a hesitancy and a sensitivity on Kanye's part when it comes to this topic, but like there are multiple songs that uh, are on Certified Lover Boy that Drake listened to them and said, yeah, this is this is done. This is not embarrassing. This can go out to the public. Yeah, the song where I'm just totally ripping off the weekend and adding nothing whatsoever artistically or creatively, uh, you know, put that out. Oh, this, uh, you know, shitty ass track where I'm sampling Right Said Fred. Uh, yeah, you had to drop that. Oh, this other song where I'm getting outshined by like every single feature on my LP. Yeah, put that one out too. Drake heard these tracks and said, yeah, these are, these are done. This is to the best of my ability. So given the tracks obviously not finished, I think comparing it to better Kanye or Drake songs that were released purposefully and uh, finished uh, doesn't really make sense. And I've seen some people making a big deal over uh, Drake it, it is, is uh, uh, making it known that he has a mole in Kanye's camp and he can leak his stuff and so on and so forth. Both of these guys are like multi, multi, multi millionaires, like so many times over. They're surrounded by huge teams of people. Lots of people work for these guys and handle their music and handle their art and handle their promotional rollouts. It's probably not too difficult to make anything like that happen. I'm sure they have mutual connections. The fact that one of them may know something about the other behind the scenes or have access to their stuff behind the scenes doesn't surprise me and doesn't really impress me at this point, honestly. Again, another, I guess, round or chapter of the Drake and Kanye beef that makes little to no sense to me is kind of dumb and I just see no end for this BS in sight. I feel like it's probably going to disappear into the background. We'll forget it's kind of there for a little bit, but uh, it, it'll flare up again at some point, I suppose. And, and when it does, I'll have some thoughts. But uh, yeah, Kanye song leaked better than the Drake songs. Why is that a big deal? I have no idea. Those are my thoughts. Love you, love you, love you. Mwah. Anthony Fantano, Beef, Kanye, Drake, forever.